Welcome to Beyond Perception, where we as always embark on a journey of self-discovery. My name is Simon, and it's my true pleasure to be here today with Marianne and Johan Niklasson. Um, the both of you, you're leading workshops, you're teaching art of being, you have a very diverse background of therapy and working with people, and the both of you together are educating now about Amanita Muscaria to from what I know, enable people to become natural magicians and manifest their dreams. So it is a great joy to be here today with you. Welcome, Marianne and Johan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, what, what we want to speak about today is what you call the most secret of all secrets, uh, Amanita Muscaria. So, um, yeah, I'm very curious. So what, what, is, this, what is the secret about? Should I start? You should start. Maybe first we say Amanita muscaria is also called the fly agaric, or in German it's the Fliegenpilz. Mm -hmm. So people know what we're talking about. <laughs> and in Swedish it's Flugswamp. So um, I became not obsessed, but I, I became very curious about this mushroom uh, about this time last year. And in the autumn, as Christmas approached, I realized they had all these Christmas decorations that are small little fly agaric uh, mushrooms. And I started to think, what is this really about? You know, this very poisonous and dangerous mushroom. Why are we using that for our Christmas traditions? And um, I am not really for use of, of drugs or I, that has never been interesting to me. As a background in osteopathy, I want to be living a healthy life and I don't want to uh, stray aside from things. I want to have natural experiences. So drugs or or mushrooms or, or uh, other types of chemicals was never interesting for me. I thought of it as something that is cheating the system or distracting you from your real true inner development. So I never really was gravitating towards them. And therefore also this as, as a mushroom, it was like questionable to me. Uh, what is this about? So I started to do some research and, and uh, October and November and December, and it was like a, a rabbit hole opening with more and more secrets being revealed. And it was absolutely fascinating to see that this mushroom and the effect it has on our body has been so profound and so important through human history that it has most likely given rise to our main religions. And when you start to research this and you start to find it, you see that there has been books written about this since the 70s, and I was unaware of them. I thought of myself as, oh, I know everything about New Age. I know everything about these authors and all these theories, and, and I've heard it all. You know, being a publisher of a magazine and so on, uh, we, we've seen a lot. But this was something that has never been on my radar before. And uh, when looking into this mushroom, it becomes clear that it has substances in it that are made to interact with the human brain. There seems to be no other reason for them to be in this mushroom than to interact with the human brain. That's a very strange thing, I think. And when you start to look at what is happening now in the world, uh, this mushroom is starting to become more popular again, or it becomes used again as it was in the ancient past. So people are starting to ingest this mushroom. They eat it, they cook it, they make tea out of it. They start to make uh, old recipes like soma and what we call the holy wine out of this mushroom. They eat it raw and uh, uh, they report fantastic and, and amazing things. And I, I really had to know more about it because it seems to be the plant medicine that actually brings you into yourself, as opposed to other mushrooms. For instance, the psilocybin mushrooms, they are connecting you with nature and, and you have an experience of being one with nature. If you're in nature and using the, uh, the magic mushrooms, you can have amazing visual experiences of connecting with nature. This mushroom, however, the fly agaric, it brings you into deep connection with your inner self. And there are very few things in nature that we know of doing this, but each continent have its own uh, way of doing this. And um, um, looking at what it does in nature, 
the mushroom that we see is just the fruiting body. And there are only about 20,000 mushrooms that have fruiting bodies. But there are over one and a half million types of mushrooms in nature. It's an amazing kingdom of beings or, or living entities. The most, uh, the, the biggest part of the mushroom is the mycelium that is growing underground. And when you start to study it, you can see that today research finds that mushrooms are actually communicating with each other through the mycelium underground. And not only that, they can let plants and trees communicate with other trees as a form of an underground internet, or maybe the original internet on the planet. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just becoming more and more intriguing the deeper you go into the issues of the mushroom. And the, the element that we have been focusing on is the effect it has on our nervous system. If you look at the nervous system, and if you could isolate that from uh, from everything else in your body, it almost looks like a tree or a root system spreading through your body. And in some way, I can't explain how, the Amanita muscaria is helping your nervous system to rearrange itself or to find new pathways, just like the mushroom does in nature. And the effect it has on our psyche is that we actually have an opportunity to change our personality. The personality is something that our little essence, when it's born, start to dress itself with, to be able to interact with the world, to respond and react to parents and family and the world around us. And the personality is supposed to be a tool for our essence, that part of us that incarnate, to be able to experience the world and give its gifts to the world and manifest its life in the world. Modern life makes this very difficult because when we start to go to school at the age of six or seven, or maybe even kindergarten these days, focus is made almost only on the personality. So the personality gains development and grows and grows. And it doesn't take long until we believe that we are our personality. We identify with it. I am my feelings. I am what I think instead of saying, I have feelings in me, or there are thoughts in me. And this battle uh, is something that you shared yourself that you have been in, that your personality becomes very established and developed and, and gets a life and, and have all these things that one should have and does what it do to survive. But essence is usually neglected. So normally in psychology, when you start to work with yourself, you dive deep through your personality and in there somewhere you find essence and usually in the form of the inner child because it's not developed and there is a possibility to develop the essence to become just as capable and grown up and mature as personality and of course this this dilemma is not is not new it has always been like that through all ages so these ancient schools all had some kind of method for you to find your inner self to disidentify from the parts of your personality and identify with your essence and then gradually gain control over your personality and arrange your personality to become a tool for you to use. And um, I have been studying such schools and I have been uh, diving deep into the fourth way, for instance, uh, with the Gurdjieff and Ospensky teachings that is doing exactly this. They're trying to help you to disidentify from the parts of your personality, which are really not you, and identify with your essence instead. And that work is known to be extremely rough and extremely difficult. And we call the uh, Amanita Muscaria the secret because it seems as if that type of work can not only happen, but most, most likely can only happen properly with the assistance of Amanita Muscaria. Sorry. Yes, you. So the Amanita muscaria. It, it looks like there is a. It, it's frozen. Is that? Is it? Um, are we actually? Can you hear us still? Sunny? Yes, I can hear you, and I can see you. you. Your, your photograph is your your image is frozen. That's why we're asking. It's, sorry, you know, but, You look oh, so no attentive. Way. Yeah, you look. <laughs> no, I'm like, very focused. Yeah. <laughs> super focused. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> so and also in the work with ourselves and, and in all these type of aspirations of getting to know yourself better and self-development and spiritual development all of this has to do with change you start somewhere and you want to go somewhere else and you have to do this journey and it seems as if this mushroom throughout the ages through millennia through millions of years have been closely uh, connected with us to assist us in this or be a part of this work because it does help us to rearrange our personalities um, because that's what you can see happening when uh, you, one starts to use Amanita Muscaria in your life. Suddenly, you become aware of the different layers of yourself, your inner self and the personality layers. And uh, the promise of Amanita Muscaria, as we have now seen in the recordings of people who use it, is that you can actually affect change in yourself. You can start to rearrange how your personality is built and you can start to program your personality with your own intent not just have it being programmed from the outer world or your past or your traumas and this is of course a fascinating aspect for us who works with personal development and group work that suddenly there is this secret or sacred missing element that makes this work much more easy and possible and factual and actual um, maybe I should do the vitamin C thing. Yeah, so uh, just imagine that, that the world was living without access to vitamin C. So uh, everyone would be more or less sick and not have such a long lifespan because we were missing this crucial element. There are so much that our bodies cannot produce that we need for our survival, that we need to live a healthy life. Proteins, uh, fats, vitamins and other things that the body can't produce we have to take in from the outside and now we're playing with the thought that maybe just maybe this mushroom that is so clearly invisible in nature can have been an integral part of our development something that we need to eat just as much as we need to eat vitamin c to have a proper solid and healthy development so this has been our angle uh, can i come in there just for um on that note um when it comes to what Johan was just describing about the the work with the personality what what we experience and also learn from others is that um, it's like a nutrient for for the soul or for the essence for this for, for our true being for that natural being that is connected with nature that is part of nature so um, we are being um, brought up and conditioned by a system that actually doesn't even like science doesn't still doesn't acknowledge the existence of a soul. So our conditioning is basically uh, away from our true being away from our soul away from who, who we truly are inside. So Amanita Muscaria, which um, it's, it seems to be what we have learned, like was the first medicine plant that has been used by people, which then has been guiding people to all the other medicine plants. So it is also called the father or or Maga is one of the names which is called, which means the great gift. And the one who has the great gift is called a, a Magus or somebody who has, you know, magic you know like it's it actually is the root of the word magic and and we see that when we are becoming more connected with who we truly are and and connected also with this with this mycelium with the, with the, with the the network of nature and life itself right we actually have to have access to our manifestational powers because we are not separate anymore like the, the personality is that layer that separates us from life and our identification with all these conditionings and programs and all these sub personalities that are so you know divided in different situations we're behaving in different ways and we feel like we are many but but we want to be one right we want to be one unified self so this self is getting a little bit of a of not not a little bit actually a lot of support to to just be here and then you start to be able to disidentify it you start to 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 recognize aha 
this is my my programming my conditioning my you know this, what i think i am my story my identification with my trauma whatever and then this is me and me experiencing life and myself and um you can start to align your different bodies like we have an emotional body an energetic body an emo a, a physical body a mental body a causal body like it's like you would some people call it the soul um and all these bodies they are somehow fragmented in the way how we are being brought up now they are not in one they're not aligned so one thing that amanita moscaria can help is that inner work of aligning all these bodies becoming more unified becoming and therefore becoming much more powerful in your manifestational work it's not a magic pill it doesn't do the work for you and it also shouldn't because there is a law of free will so it's still your decision how you want to what you want to manifest how you want to live yourself how do you want to what is the, the highest part of yourself that you want to you know incarnate here and do you listen to your soul do you do you want that and then also the work you need to do it yourself because the law of self-activation is also in place but it gives that being the, the the nourishment that it would need to be able to free itself and from from something that that i for myself experience a lot of the time as a prison there is like stuff that i i can't you know i i know that i want something else i know i understand things in a different way but then through my conditioning through my nervous system through my identifications i am basically locked in set behaviors and and there is resistances i'm not even aware of that are keeping me away from manifesting what i really want so Amanita Muscaria helps to make everything much more like brings more plasticity brings like loosens up this very you know um crystallized structures in in our nervous system in our brain and makes it possible to actually change from within in in a very real way how we experience it so so, so i think most of us have tried to go into um, states of change we have tried to change behaviors or patterns that we are stuck with addictions and uh, behaviors or, or life situations that keep repeating themselves and i think most of us can say that yeah that's not actually really easy one can do it but it's not easy at all and it seems as if the the substances in the amanita muscaria and maybe there is a spiritual element to this too like the 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 spirit of amanita muscaria the the spirit of this being that has been on this planet longer than humanity maybe that is also playing a part in connecting us or our being or our soul with the greater nature so of course it would look strange to people who don't have this connection to see someone who has it a, a maga or a magician who is using his words to manifest things in reality it would look like some the magic that we know from movies right where it's very strange and odd and shouldn't be able to happen but if you're aligned and your orders come from your own soul and these are traveling through your essence through your uh, personality and in connection with nature in connection with the spiritual aspects of nature then things manifest in a way that they don't do otherwise and this is what gives the uh, the rumor or the these um these hopes of coming into your natural, magical, manifestational power. That is not strange at all. It's just how things are supposed to be. And I, I know many people coming into this life and they look around and they say, what is going on on this planet? Why is everything so hard? It's supposed to be easier. It's supposed to be much um, lighter to uh, think the good things and then have them happen in your life. But without this secret, without this sacred uh, element, it becomes much more difficult. That's my conclusion at the time, at least. So, and also when we talk about this, we, we don't uh, uh, want to have anyone believe that we know the truth, that this is the ultimate truth. This is an area 
or a field of exploration and investigation right now. And we are reconnecting with what the research that has been done all over the world and, and also in ancient times and other cultures and, and with the people in Siberia, the shamans and so on, to learn more about how this has been used in our ancient past. And, and uh, when you start to look at it, it's quite fascinating to see that it actually seems as if um, the main religions that we know of um, the, the ones that came before Christianity and even the Catholic, uh, Roman Catholic Church and all of those big religions have as a core element this mushroom and what it gives you. It gives you power over yourself. And of course, if, if uh, there are time periods in, in the past where this was openly used, then you see all these temples and you see all this imagery of people having mushrooms coming out of their head or, or this symbol of the um, the cap of the mushroom over your head as a gloria. All this symbolism goes through history in statues and in paintings. And um, if you see that these periods have been there for thousands of years, maybe uninterrupted, there has also been periods where this mushroom was kept a secret. It was kept a secret, maybe, or most likely for several reasons. For instance, since it gives this manifestational power, those who keep it the secret might want to keep that power away from bad people who will abuse it or get power over other people instead. But it can also be those people who are in power who want to keep uh, manifesting their own version of life on this planet. And they don't want anyone else to have access to manifestational power. So then they, during certain periods in time, keep it for themselves. And it appears as if you're coming out of some one of these periods right now, because the mushroom and the use of it is appearing on all continents. It's not just here in Switzerland. It's not just in America. It's not in Russia or Lithuania. It's happening everywhere because this mushroom grows all over the planet. And uh, sometimes I get this image from this, this scene in the Lord of the Rings where the trees uproot themselves and join the battle. It's a little bit like that. And uh, shamans have that as an explanation also now that nature is coming to uh, humanity's assistance because humanity is under attack and has been for a couple of years quite dramatically. Um, it's a fascinating story and there are so many aspects to this. It's the whole um, story of looking at how this is a part of Christianity, how it's part of Mithraism, how it's part of many of these old cultures in India and uh, how it's part of our ancestors in Sweden, for instance, in our Christmas traditions, where this mushroom pops up everywhere. It's a fascinating study. Yeah, and it's it, like what I always, for, for us is in Austria, we have it less um, around Christmas, we have it around New Year's as a symbol of luck, for example. So funny to think that this is, it's listed as one of the most poisonous mushrooms that exist. That, that's what I know about it. Yeah. Exactly. And those of us, mm. most of us know, stay away from mm. it, don't even mm. touch it and so forth. But we all somehow accept it as a symbol of luck. You know, that is like at, at Sylvester in, in my country, you get a little bit of a, a little amanita. It's on, on all the Christmas cards and so from the old times, especially. So there is something about our subconscious that actually is kind of like, completely accepting it and not questioning it at all because it has been so deeply part of our culture and our our, our history the whole eurasian continent all these all the different old religions have been in some way using it and um also the whole christmas tradition that we believe has something to do with christianity but in reality it is coming from the Siberian shamans who used to pick the mushrooms and then hang them in trees. And it's usually um, pine trees or needle trees where they grow underneath and they, they are living a, a symbiotic life with trees. So the Amanita has to have a tree to, to live with. It gives the tree an, an immune system because it's incredibly antiviral, antibacterial, um, has all kinds of amazing nutritional um, properties and it's getting food from the from the tree like carbohydrates so they pick the mushrooms they hang them in the tree to dry because the drying process is was one way of conserving them but also it converts um, one of the substances that has a little bit of an of an irritation um, it, it can be irrita irritating to the to the stomach you can start to vomit or get cramps 
So that's being transformed into, into another substance, into muscimol, which is more the psychoactive substance. And it's not psychedelic like, like um, the psilocybin mushrooms, but more psychoactive. It actually works with your psyche in, in a lasting way. And so we have the tree, that Christmas tradition of having something hung in the tree. So that's why we bring a tree into the house. The whole Santa Claus story it was the Siberian shamans having these mushrooms, these dried mushroom caps in their bag and then going to the people in the village. If the yurt was snowed in very much, they had to put it into the smoke hole. So there we have the whole chimney thing, Santa coming <laughs> down the chimney with the gifts. Mm -hmm. They were sometimes dry, hung up to dry still in the yurt. And then like they would do that at the solstices, like the summer solstice mm -hmm. and also the winter solstice. And then you could eat the mushroom either together with the shaman or probably that you did it together with the shaman. I don't know how they did it. We don't know that much about this, um, um, how they did it in the past. But then you could um, ask for something and you would meet, there's always the report of like little beings like gnomes or or elves. And also that is in our all our symbolisms. We have the gnomes in the Nord Nordic countries or the Christmas elves or so, you know, so also that we have, it's right here, plain in plain sight, right? But we never question why do we have elves and gnomes around Christmas and around Santa. So it's said that then you meet those beings and and they give you instructions on how to manifest what you want and, and how to how you have to behave. And so, so to, to get what you want or to be who you want to be. And also the flying reindeer, like reindeer love Amanita, they, they dig it out in the snow and eat it and then they behave in very strange ways. Um, so all of that is right here with us, but the secret ingredient is hidden from us. So we don't know why, why all this. And, and but there is a magical element in it that that is now um, just coming up. People are starting to reconnect with it. And interestingly, in a way that that like in the past, it was more um, really in rituals and ceremonies where people had got like a like a divine inspiration or, or an, a lived experience of, of divinity. They were also using it for prophecy, like in the oracles in Greece or so. There was many cults around it. There was like ecstatic dance and, and poetry and, and art and all these things actually come from these lived experiences of, of, a, of a higher consciousness, of a high, deeper connection with life. And how people are now starting to use it is with microdosing. So they're starting to eat like every day just a little bit, which is below the threshold of actually having that you that you would be very much um, influenced in your normal consciousness. You can still do everything you need to do, but it's still like in an incremental way works with your system. And it's an adaptogen. So it works with everybody differently because everybody has a has a completely unique setup and a unique um, situation in their in their bodies, um, and it, it adds up over time. So you actually over time need less and less because it builds up in your system. And then from time to time you can take higher doses, have a different experience. Um, but it seems like for our modern world, the microdosing is is a very good way to work with it. I come from from doing a lot of ceremonial work with plant medicines, and it's usually very strong and very, it's like opening your mind so much and and giving you like a very intense and, and wonderful experience most of the time. But the integration can be a little bit of a of a tricky thing because my experience is often you can stay open and aligned and connected for quite a while, but then at some point your conditioning will will kick in again and, and the personality is kind of like closing in on you again and you find yourself, oh no, I'm back in this shit, you know, I thought I have left it behind. And, and with Amanita, since it's assisting you in doing your own work in, in your everyday life situations and, and starting to give you a choice, and since you're doing it by yourself, the work just with this assistance and this help and this guidance, 
it then actually belongs to you so it stays it's changed it's it's incremental change that you can make that will last this is something i find really fascinating and that i'm also experiencing like there's some things inside that are changing on such a deep level that i haven't been able to get to with all the work that i've done you know there's been stuff that has been like like locked you know in the deep writing of my code like pre pre-birth conditioning like like very very early childhood imprint that you naturally are identified with you know this is who i am i had such and such a birth or childhood or whatever and it gives you the the, the it, it leads you to these places and 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 helps you to to re-experience but in a very gentle very friendly way and then helps you to disidentify at least that's what i'm how i'm working with it i'm sure everybody depending on what kind of toolbox they have acquired in their life work maybe a little bit differently with 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 this opportunity but i find that um that has been very magical for me to be able to disidentify and the moment i have the the erkenntnis you know like i'm starting to see something i come to see ah oh, this is not me i am me and this is my conditioning for example there's something about my whole state that changes and then i'm actually in the world differently and different things become possible and different options become available in situations that before i was just locked in in certain behaviors or reactions so i'm starting to become able to respond and choose so who do i want to be and this is where the whole rewriting that was that you for becomes so important because there's a level of healing and of realignment but then you start to become come into a position where you actually are responsible of what you choose and how do you want to form your personality to serve your essence to become the interface with the world that can do that can you know really have an influence on on your outside world like you were saying before like so how can i contribute what what is my gift to share with the world instead of be locked in this inner conflict between my true being and my personal personality i can start to make the personality the servant of my highest self and say okay i want you to manifest a great you know you know whatever a great time for everyone around me or you know i want to be a good partner i want to you know become healthy and and have the means i need to live i want to be kind i want to look at everything with the eyes of love however you want to you know whoever you want to be and suddenly it becomes much more possible okay so i've, I've been fiddling around here because i have a few images i would like to share is that okay yes absolutely please yeah we're, we're traveling around now in switzerland doing a presentation about uh, amanita muscaria and we are trying to show the history as we have found it and uh, traces of it in ancient, ancient history and religions and also some other things. So I will see if I can share those images on screen with you. You have to yeah. tell me if you can see it. Yes, I get it. Yes. Okay, good. So uh, this is an image of statues and, and symbols being carved out of stone and uh, other items. and. Uh, what is quite clear is that symbolism was the way of using these uh, messages to people around you. These are like small books, but in the form of sculptures. And symbolism is quite important. And I've made arrows here to show that the mushroom has been shown to be connected with the head or grow out of the head or be behind the head in many of our ancient cultures. It's uh, a, a way of showing that people are using a mushroom and what we believe to be the Amanita muscaria to develop. They also use the psilocybin mushroom or different mushrooms in the ancient times. So sometimes you see very clearly that it's an Amanita. Sometimes it looks more like the, the blue mushroom, the psilocybin mushroom, but clearly they have been using um, mushrooms for this, you know, connecting deeper to yourself, connecting to a higher reality. But if I may ask here, so you clearly um, differentiate between um, the two, right? Between, Absolutely. 
Yeah, yeah there are indications that it has been, uh, of course, use of many different type of plant medicines and many different mm -hmm. type of mushrooms. The the one that seems to be the the real core one is the Amanita muscaria, the fly agaric. But then other mushrooms were also used, but for different purposes. Mm -hmm. It seems as if one has to start with Amanita muscaria, and then one can use other type of plant medicines to expand your consciousness in different directions. But as Marianne has mentioned before, mm -hmm. uh, Amanita muscaria seems to be uh, building upon itself. So you reach a certain level and you stay there. You don't fall back. And many, many have the experiences when they use uh, psilocybin mushrooms, they have a great experience, but then they kind of like fall back into their old life. While with Amanita muscari, you actually build upon what you have done before. It's a very creative work. And, and um, also with um, what you're saying now, what I understand is that um, what you experience or what you're what you're creating in that sense it remains with you this in integrated you're not um exactly. you're not in a sense creating a dependency on um, a stimulants or so and it's exactly and it's also it hasn't been so popular among people who are using um substances for for inner growth and theogens as we call them because it doesn't really give you such a a, a trip or, or for many mm -hmm. it's like not such a nice trip mm -hmm. so like like psilocybin usually it's a lovely experience of being connected with the web of life kind of like you're feeling like i'm one with nature i'm one with this i am part of of nature i'm not separate which is like our big pain as human beings that that we are separate and that we have to find our way back into into this into unity into a unified consciousness so um so every every plant also like ayahuasca or iboga or so they're all working differently with the consciousness and they are allowing like dmt is 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 opening us for the cosmos or for the like the whole like dying within within your life like dying into who you truly are things like that and uh amanita has as you said this this thing of like guiding you back into yourself, like we said before, like this very early, um, old, old, deep, deep buried conditioning that is that is maybe not really who you truly are. So you are, can become who you truly are. Can I say something to that? Yeah. Because you know we we talk about essence and personality, and that is very uh, schwammelig, you would say in in, in German, right? <laughs> if you can't define what it is. And many of these things you can only define after having an experience of the difference. Mm -hmm. But um, let's say that personality are those reactions that are built upon experiences in your life. And personality then is actually written in your nervous system. It's the pathways through your brain and your nervous system where the neurons have been firing based on what have happened. You have a trauma or a traumatic experience and you learned a way of dealing with it and this is just firing off automatically it's really like a robot it's like a machine it's just a computer program firing off in the same pathways and then you can have a trauma which is like an inflammation in the system and it keeps being there you can't really do anything about it you approach it and you want to avoid it and that creates new patterns you become an intricate machine of avoiding pain basically <laughs> that's what the personality is trying to do and uh, most of us have Compensating for the tension, right? Yes. The personality is serving the outside world more than the essence. Mm. And that is that is what we tr have seen now, that you can actually shift this so that the personality becomes a servant of your essence instead. Mm. And uh, by intentionally rewriting the pathways which you should react and respond. So instead of reacting, you can start to act. And instead of having an, an automatic reaction, you can have a response, which is more intentional. And of course, if you rewrite your personality, if you rewrite the way you are with the world, then everything will change for you. The world is a reflection of who you are in the world. And if your outer layer, if your personality is shifting and changing, your whole world will change. And I would like to show a few more images from- Yes, uh, please, yeah. Um, so let me know if you can see this. Yes. So this is early images of pre-Christian um, uh, symbolism. And this is the tree of life and the apple. The apple could be 
used as a fruit or the fruit could be used to describe basically anything you could eat in nature. So the fruit of a tree, for instance, could be uh, something red that is underneath the tree suddenly without any seeds. It's quite magical how it appears. It appears after a rain or a thunderstorm and suddenly it's just there magically. It's like virgin birth. Of course, if you eat the apple, then you get access to knowledge and understanding. And if you look at the lower left image, it's often portrayed um, as if Adam or man has a foot on a snake or the reptile. And the way we interpret it now is that um, the substance that is most known for having an effect on us is the muscomol inside of the Amanita muscaria. And the muscomol is relaxing the reptile brain. It's actually making it possible for you to live without immediately respond from the reptile brain. The reptile brain has three major responses. It's freeze, it's fight, or it's flight. And the moment we are doing these things, we don't really have access to our higher functions in the brain. So getting a control over your reptile brain and not being caught in these patterns of reacting in um, these three ways actually liberates you quite a lot. So you will see that in many of the ancient imagery. And this is an old fresk on uh, wood. And um, I don't know about you, we, we enlarged part of it uh, and put that enlargement to the right. Mm -hmm. To me, this is imagery of the Amanita muscaria. It's quite clear and obvious. If you know about it, if you know what to look for, you will see the Amanita muscaria in all kinds of religious imagery. And you will see how Christ is depicted as if mm -hmm. he is the mushroom. That mushroom actually is the Christ. <laughs> That's how it's depicted. I mean, you can interpret things uh, as you want. And mm -hmm. we have no intention in uh, uh, damaging people's belief systems or um, messing with people's religious um, uh, beliefs. I want everyone to know that they, of course, should keep their religious beliefs close to their heart and that there is truth there. It's just different ways of interpreting mm -hmm. uh, our religions that we are showing now. There's actually a few really uh, great books uh, written about this, like there has been like in the last century, in the 19th century, there was um, uh, scholars or, or people who were, you know, fascinated with this, uh, they, they dived into the whole research around this, that's why we have all this imagery, and so there's some really, really good and interesting um, books to read about it, like how they, uh, there has been um, a man called Wasson, who he, he identified that um, a, a plant god that was um, described in the oldest um, religious script that we have on the on on earth, which is the the Rig Veda Veda from the from the Vedan from the Hin from Hinduism, they are describing in many many names in the very poetic descriptions a plant god that is doing all these miracle healings and all these and that also has a, a thing with like not death with resurrection with virgin birth with things that that these descriptions have repeated in in many of the different old religions there was like a personification of a god that had these descriptions and we know it from christ so there comes this of course it's like you start to wonder hmm so maybe there is something that a common denominator that they all have that either they were taking it or maybe they are a personification of the mushroom we don't know we just see it being in all these um, um, statues and 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 pictures there is the symbolism of the connection with the mushroom either people eating the mushrooms or even being the mushroom so um yeah so there is this um interpretation of the word uh, the flesh of the flesh of god in old times, that was what you called the flesh of the mushroom, was the flesh of gods. And then you have the saying, you can actually produce wines from the Amanita muscaria. In ancient times, wines did not have alcohol in them. They were spiced with uh, spices and different types of elements, and one of them were the Amanita muscaria. And when Amanita muscaria is, is put in wine, you can call it soma, you can call it the holy wine. But uh, it was drunk, and you would get these active substances from the mycelium into your system. So there was a holy wine, well, and you know, then you, it suddenly makes sense with some of these images that you have from uh, Christianity, where he says, uh, "Eat my flesh and drink my blood," and according to the imagery, it actually looks like Christ is in the cup, 
the Christ is the wine, the wine is Christ, Christ. And that would be then a symbolism of that the substances that are in Amanita Muscaria, and if you ingest them, you can have an experience, direct experience of God or your connection with the universe. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty interesting and fascinating, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, um, um, and what you've been mentioning before is that your recommendation is to approach that substance through micro dosing. So, um, and and what is okay, the way you you say something uh, quickly to that? Um, mm -hmm. It's easy to focus on your childish dreams and hopes. Oh, so here is something I can take and my wish will come through. Mm -hmm. My wish will be the law, like for the sovereigns. My wish is the law. If you actually are sovereign, your wish is the law. But it's easy to focus on that and forget about your own work. So it's also called the mushroom for adults, meaning that you have to be ready to confront those part of yourself that you might not like so much. And if you do wish for something, if you want to manifest something, maybe that will not appear immediately. Maybe what will appear is that part in you that is making it impossible for that to manifest. So you will have to confront yourself. And this is what this mushroom do. It confronts you with yourself. It aligns you. You become aware of all those dark little areas in your personality that you might have suppressed, know anything about. And this is also one of the reasons why this mushroom has never become popular in the tripping culture, because people don't get this uh, um, visual um, ecstatic experience of connecting with the nature and so they actually connect with themselves and for many people that might not be a very pleasant experience or they don't really register what happens and the the substances in the mushroom they work on you no matter what you think it works on you if you like it if you don't don't like it so if you start to take it the effects of the mushroom will start to work with you you will start to rewrite yourself you will start to work with traumas your system will readjust itself and rearrange itself and it's almost like you get access to the source code i have a laptop in front of me here so it's almost like someone opens the laptop put up the programming and you are now having access to the keyboard you can write your own life you can rewrite your nervous system your personality of course that's a huge responsibility and if you don't do it someone else might or someone else will you're open for your code is open it will be rewritten so you have to really have a strict practice. You have to know that everything I say, everything I do, everything I feel, everything I think now has a very strong effect on my personality, who I will be from now on. It also connects you with the internet, or as I say, the internet, right, of the world. So my wish is now a signal to the world for manifestation. One have to be very careful what one wish for and how one does this work. So to avoid um, this becoming a new trippy mm -hmm. thing or, or something that people look for as an escapism or, or uh, look, look to use in a very childish way, we want people to approach this in a serious manner. And by microdosing, you get to know the effects in yourself from using this medicine or this, this magical um, assistant, this, this visible friend in your life. Also, so so what you do with the microdosing, or what 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 um, we recommend, or what we also support for people is, um, you you take about like up to a gram or so per day of the of the mushroom caps. We 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 now have them like in like in in a powder where you can have like a, a already measured uh, in in caps that you can that you can take, so you know how much that is. You can take. In different ways we, we like either as an infusion or you take it directly depending on on how you want the effect if it's more excited more excitatory or more calming so there are some some tricks to how to use it and and then um go in with an intention with and that might be just in the beginning a very general um quest for healing you know many of us we have like like chronic inflammation and stuff in our bodies that we are not even aware of sometimes or we have some really some something really that we are struggling with and then you ask for it and amanita will do the work it might just look very different than from what you expect mm -hmm. you know like our our mind has all these these expectations of how things are supposed to manifest and in what time frame and so so 
the recommendation is at first to do this like for one month you can also do it longer like some people do it for years but after a while you feel also that okay now you're kind of saturated and now it's time to maybe not do it every day but maybe every three days or every five days or every 10 days or we think that probably in the past they did it every seven days like what we have like with a mass or so mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. like to have this realignment again and again mm -hmm. And 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 it, it works with you after a while, even if you don't take it directly, that it also works on the days when you don't take it. You certainly start to feel like, oh, okay, so there is work being done. And a lot of the work happens in your sleep or in these in-between states where you are like dreaming or or like drifting is like daydreaming or in the in the falling asleep or waking up states, or sometimes also in deep sleep, depending on you know how much you are, you know allowed to participate in the work and the dream states that you can come into are very very fascinating they are like you have several layers of consciousness available you're, you're there's the part of you that that is feels like it's awake another part is is aware of the dreaming or or you have like in, you can actually influence the dream in a different way or i had a lot of very a lot of motion in my dreams the first few weeks like a lot of strong like flying or or falling down or or just walking through the air or like very interesting that i interpret as working with my nervous system like recalibrating of the deep freeze that i have in my nervous system bringing more sympathetic um availability into the system some people start to feel more irritated because they have more of the sympathetic um, nervous system available where they can actually defend their boundaries or they start to be able to say no or set boundaries or choose what they want or feel what they or feel that something's not good for them or so so it's like a, a process depending where we stand right some people just get very tired and don't feel anything you know or, or feel mm -hmm. this is so or you can get you really dive into the stuff that is keeping you from what you actually want like johan said so one has to be prepared to be open and and trusting the process and and um, be patient we have never been trained to be sovereign we are we are living mm -hmm. in a slave society we have never been instructed of how to think for ourselves or how to learn what is true for ourselves and the mushroom is really for adults, people who are willing to put themselves in the position of becoming sovereign from inside out, to realign with their purpose in life, realign with their essence and getting signals from their soul of what is about to happen or what they are supposed to do in life before when you are, are becoming aware of what type of journey you're starting. Because it's it's when you build on it, you, you come to a certain level and then you stay there and then you go on again. You can't reverse this process. You can't be unaware of what you become aware of. So you have to uh, it seriously and, and don't fool around with this and find people that know there are more and more information now coming online or several shamans that are making this available to the world. And of course, we want to do our part and spread information and knowledge about this from our angle, which is personal development and spiritual development. I, I have one more image that I want to show. Yes, uh, please. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I wanted to show something that you start to approach when you learn more about this mushroom. Who has kept this uh, for themselves for a long time? Well, there are indications, and here might be some. So this is imagery from um, the Catholic Church, how they dress, how they build their shrines, and how they use their architecture. Usually, um, the secrets are out in the open if you know how to look for them. Mm. We have the whole Christmas um, myths and legends. And the woman to the right who is holding up a mushroom, she's a shaman from Siberia. They were usually female. And this is the dress they use. Yeah. Of course, uh, our Christmas is littered with these references to mushrooms being hung in trees to dry, to be used later. Someone coming with the gift. The gift is growing underneath the tree. It's part of our collective subconsciousness is part of our culture and that can't be erased even if you want to keep it away from us for a few thousand years we will still find our way back and of course being connected to nature makes your life look as if you're extremely lucky 
because things are aligning with you. You become the creator of your life. You give instructions, you make wishes, and nature responds. And nature is abundance. Nature is giving and receiving. It's it's really just connecting with what what we are actually made of and, and part of. Yeah. So um, we are running out on time a little bit on our end. We're going to go and do some more presentations today. But I want to, I, I want to, uh, you know, if you have, do you have any question that is that that you want to ask now? Because we have been bombarding, you know, with yeah. stuff so full with this because we are talking a lot about mm -hmm. it. But is there anything that you still want to ask? Or you know? yeah, first of all, thank thank you so much yeah, for sharing your perspective and also those information with us. I was listening very curiously and interested, and it made a lot of sense intuitively to me so i i had my own psychedelic experiences um <laughs> and um I, I don't feel i need them again but what you're sh like but but obviously not with um with this mushroom yet but what you're sharing to me it 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 resonates uh, because what i get it's a very different angle to like how um how I myself in the past approached those psychedelic experiences. And I know many people who are, I would say, chasing experiences. Yeah. So, and then kind of, and that also like seems on the one hand very helpful to where they are at life. I mean, but also um, it becomes a purpose in itself very easily to chase experiences to kind of avoid your own suffering so or your own issues in a, in a sense so i have been closing that chapter for myself yeah um but but now what you're sharing to me that that, that there's a very different intention behind so what, what what i at least um sense it's not about kind of oh it's a miserable here let let me escape somewhere else or um but uh, more point of deeper understanding of oneself or who who you actually are beyond that uh, experience or conditioning and um, would, would you so my, my question is would you say it's it's it, it gives you more awareness of what actually is so so um, distance to to that experience which you tend to easily identify with and then you can see it is just an experience of what experience to actually want to have yes yes it does since it is it is uh, because it is so much more it, it's it's strengthening that connect that connection or that your identification with yourself you are starting to have a chance to differentiate between yourself and the stuff that's happening to you or even the the, the inner psychic stuff like your sub personalities and and your mm -hmm. mechanical reactions if, if the self doesn't have any nourishment as it doesn't get much nourishment now in this world that we live in and we are very misled from all angles um it doesn't have anything to to put up against the conditioning and the outside you know stuff that is pull, pulling us into reaction uh, and into our mechanicalness so since that living part of us is getting uh, strengthened and nourished there is a chance where you can start to see things for what they are and you start to be able to feel aha this is me and this is my alignment and this is my connection so i from from my experience and also from what we are learning from other people yes it does do that and for those of the listeners who are now interested to approach um that um what you're um introducing here and test or apply for themselves what what would be a recommendation um, from your side um, you're based in switzerland and zurich so there's a possibility to get in touch with you i imagine you also just mentioned you're about to give a workshop so what would be yes, your so recommendation we are just a small little piece of the big 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 puzzle there are great people out there in the world that are presentation the facts about how amanita muscaria has been used in the past and there are shamans with deep experience of this years and years of experience of using this actively for themselves in groups of people so we are in no way uh, you know in any position of of uh, rising above anyone else 
I, I want to make sure that everyone understands that in this work of being with ourselves, we're all on the eye level. So there is no one that is above you. There is no one that is knowing more than you uh, in this way. They might have different experiences that come from different angles and have learned different things. And so we don't want to promote ourselves as, as the, the, the source of information or anything like that. We just want to work with people that have an interest in growing and rewriting themselves and become what their potential tells them that they can be in this world and work with their personalities. And, and we just love those spaces. The essential space is what we burn for. This is what we want to do. And Amanita just fits perfectly into this work. So yes, we do give presentations. Uh, we will have workshops for those who wants to work with this actively together with other people. And we have a, a platform online, which is invitation only, where people can join groups and learn more and connect with other people. So I can provide those uh, links to you and you can show them. Mm -hmm. If anyone feels uh, an urge or, or feels invited to connect with us, they can do so. And also what we really would like to know is if there are people who want us to come and do a live presentation, because we showed you a few of, of our 60 images that we do in the presentation that is related to Amanita Muscaria. And there is so much more to cover. The size mushroom, the time mushroom, it's called so many different things. And there's so many areas we haven't been able to go into in this short conversation. So mm -hmm. if you know that you have maybe 10 people around you or more that can come to one place at one location, will show up and we will do this presentation for you. For us, this is the number one priority on the planet right now. It's nice when people organize themselves and they want to have alternatives to the WEF plan of the future, the Great Reset, they want to find alternatives, they want to resist it. But without being sovereign, mm. not much will happen. They have thousands of years of experience of manipulating groups of people and disintegrate organizations and realign them to fulfill their purpose instead. The organization in groups is great, but it has to be done with people who are centered in themselves, who come from within mm. to the outside and who are capable to live the change they want to uh, apply in the world. And also know the difference about power over other people and power over self. This is like the ancient battle. You have to make a choice. So you can be a servant in heaven or a ruler on the planet. You have to choose what life you want to live. And Amanita does not tell you what to do. It just gives you the resources. It holds you in a hand while you make these choices for yourself. It checks in with you. Do you really want? And if you say yes, it says, okay. You can even hear it as a voice sometimes actually speaking to you. And it's not your subconsciousness. It's an outside uh, spiritual entity of I don't know what it is. We are still discovering these things. Uh, yeah, what you're sharing resonates very much with my own, with my own discovery. It, it, so many people are reacting to um, that proposed agenda out there. But by being in their reaction, they're actually still um, perpetuating the same, the, the same consciousness of control and um, projecting your strengths outwards and um, Therefore, thank you very much for share, sharing these um, this very important perspective and um, also the information today. So, yeah, thank you, the both of you, for taking the time to be here and um, yeah, speaking to us. And I will gladly share any links you want me to share with the conversation. So it will be here down there in the show notes. Um, yeah, thank thank you again. Yeah, true pleasure and. Um, Really great um, being here together with you. And um, yeah, hopefully we see each other another time. Yes. And um, yeah, thank you all also to you, dear listeners, for being with us, being open and curious. All the best and see you next time. What's my potential? What's really inside me? Is it possible to be joyful and to express who I truly am? Do I have unique gifts and talents? And if I do, how do I fight them? And if I fight them, how do I bring them into life? And is it even possible to make a living from what I actually love to do? Those were some of the questions which drove me now more than a decade. And I don't want to give you a definitive answer, but... I learned very valuable principles on my quest that 
help me to discover who I am and to bring what I am actually into this life beyond expectations, beyond conditioning, beyond limiting or self-defeating negative thoughts. And now I want to be the bridge and pass those principles on to you and not only remind you with my words, but actually enable you to discover an experience that for yourself, real self-discovery, that you are a wonderfully creative being, a genius in the true sense of the word, and you have the potential and the possibility to unfold what, what is actually in you and set yourself creatively free. This is my mission. Very important, please don't believe my words or possibly your own skeptical thoughts, but check it out, experience it for yourself and take part in our next seminar, Structural Creativity, more information here. I'm really looking forward to set your creativity free.